Hello, welcome to episode 220 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 18th of August. So welcome everybody. I hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you. I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. Well, I say seven days, but I do apologise for not podcasting last week because I wasn't very well, but I'm feeling much better now, so that's good. And I've got plenty of things to show you in this week's podcast. So I have some knitting, some sewing, a blast from the past. I have some confessions. Oh dear. <laughs> it's okay though. I had to treat myself because I couldn't go to the Festival of Quilts this weekend, so I thought I'd buy something online instead. I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. I have a few things to tell you about in my shop update for this week and a little appearance from Jensen at the very end of the podcast. So we've got a couple of make-alongs in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. That's Craft 20 a Day and the Craft House Magic Summer Sock Along 2022. They're both on Ravelry and on Instagram. Details of those are in the description bar down below. And we've also got the Craft House Magic project bag sew along 2022 as well and again the details are in the description bar down below but that one is just on instagram the hashtags and everything are in there as well so let's get on with the knitting shall we i have a finished object that actually liz has knitted um i picked the yarns out and i just thought that they'd be a lovely sample out of my own hand dyed yarn to show the colors off together so this is the frank shawl by Hohi Locatelli and it is gorgeous. So this is such a lovely shape. I'll show you what it looks like on in a minute, but it's basically made of three sections that are Vs and I've chosen three main colors and then a contrast color to go with those. So I've got a black, uh, a sort of deep pink burgundy and a, like a dusky pink and then to go with that I've got like this mustardy colour and these are all dyed on my merino silk and yak base which is lovely soft and drapey and it's just beautiful yarn so the black is called black velvet the sort of burgundy pinky burgundy is man I feel like a woman the dusky pink is kiss me and then the gold is gold and I just thought that those went together really nicely so the frank shawl so you sort of knit these sections um, sort of one at a time and they're absolutely lovely because the two front sections lay on the shoulders really nicely and then on the back you can see the sort of burgundy pink section and I just love how that lays on the body and it, it stays on really nicely as well so this is a lovely easy knit it's mostly got a stitch with some eyelet patterns in there as well um, but a lovely easy knit even though there's four skeins of yarn in this pattern and you do use quite a lot of it um, it's quite a nice easy one to follow so you end up using most of the gold colour but then there's probably about 30 grams left of the other three um, which is nice so that you're not playing yarn chicken. When Liz knitted it she's quite a loose knitter and there was still um, sort of about seven grams left so she wasn't playing yarn chicken either. I must admit in the pattern it does say that you might want to get two skeins of this contrast colour that goes in with all three so I know that Liz is quite a loose knitter so I know for the amount of meterage uh, that's on these yarns there's plenty to knit this shawl which is lovely to know so I have actually sort of blocked this I soaked it in some eucalan um, I'll leave a link to the eucalan in the description bar down below but I didn't actually pin it out because it is garter stitch because it is a nice squishy texture what I decided to do is actually just carefully fold it so it didn't crease up and lay it on top of my heated area which I normally put our washing on so I ended up folding it um, like this so that the sections were folded one over the other um, so there was no crease marks in any weird places and it just laid on our heated air flat and dried really nicely and I didn't have to actually um, straighten out any of the ad edges which is really lovely so that is the back panel and it's such a beautiful pattern I think Hohi always comes out with some interesting designs and I'm really pleased with that one and I thought that because 
Liz has knitted a lovely sample for it, I'd actually make a kit of the four yarns that you need to make the Frank shawl um, and put them on my website so that you can just purchase all four together um, to make this shawl or another shawl that requires four skeins of yarn. So that's my first finished object I got to show you even though Liz knitted it for me. So the next thing I've got to show you is the butterfly and cocoon and this is a, such a cute little pattern. It's a pattern by Susan B Anderson and the pattern is written so that you make this little cocoon separate so that you can take it off which I think is really really sweet. So this is what the butterfly looks like. Um, and I've just chosen to use some nice bright orange yarn for the wings and the antennae. So I striped two colours for the main body, kept one for the face and the blue yarn for the, for the thorax of the body. And he's all finished and I've showed you that before. So that's the butterfly. And then you knit this cocoon separately, which is very, very sweet. And I chose to use the same yarn as the body just because I wasn't sure whether I'd have enough yarn of this orange um, to knit the full cocoon. But the cocoon is just the cutest little thing. It does say in the pattern that you can steam block it, but I, have, I just sort of let it stretch out on the body of the butterfly. Um, but that is really, really sweet. It's a nice, easy knit. Um, the instructions are really nice, easy to follow, and I definitely knit one of these again. What I might do, however, is if I do it in four ply yarn, is reduce the needle size for the main butterfly, just because it has stretched the stitches out a little bit on the body, um, but it still looks really nice, and I definitely do this pattern again. The antennae are slightly wonky, and his wings are one bigger than the other because I didn't follow my increases and decreases correctly, but I think he still looks super cute, and I just love the way he looks when he's all snuggled up inside this little cocoon and I think Jensen's going to have lots of fun taking him in and out of his little cocoon so you can tuck that little those little antennae in there as well so he's completely encased in the little cocoon um, but it is quite nice to have that little bit of a pop of colour so I'll put those out um, and I like the little i-cord loop at the back as well so you could make lots of these and have them hung up um, and I think they're super super cute and I'm very tempted to do some more of Susan B Anderson's little toy patterns I've got my eye on a little kitten that I've been meaning to do for ages um, so there we are these this was actually made with with little scraps of yarn I had in my stash I don't know where the yarns were from apart from the leading mem fiber arts one which I used for the main body bit here um, but there we go, that's our little butterfly and cocoon. I will leave links to the patterns that I talk about in the description bar down below and the yarns if I if I know what they are. So we're now on to my works in progress section. So I decided that I needed to finally go back and sort out my pattern for the triangulum blanket to make sure that I'd written out the instructions correctly um, to make a straight edge on the triangulum blanket. And you can see here I've been making a half triangle shape so that the edge of the triangulum blanket can be squared off to make it nice and square edges rather than having the edge go in and out all the way along the side the half triangles square that off nicely and then the pattern has instructions to do an eye card finish as well but I haven't done that yet on this one because it's still quite a small sample um, when I've done the half triangle this side you'll be able to see that that's sort of the squared off size the top edge is already square with the triangles um, and then with the half triangles at the side, you can see that you can completely square that off. So I have written the, out the instructions and I will be hopefully getting those published over the weekend. So those of you who have already purchased my triangle and blanket pattern will have the instructions for these half triangles as well because they have the decrease lines coming from the centre here so that they match up nicely with the full triangles. Um, and that's just two that I've done on the side of this sample piece. 
So this one is just made from all my sort of jewel tone scraps in my stash. The triangular blanket is a really lovely way of using up very small scraps of yarn. I personally use about three grams for one triangle. So if you were using a mini set, that would be a good way to um, that would be a good way to use up minis or if you've got tiny little scraps that are as small as three grams. Now you can see that I have blocked this piece now. Um, when you actually knit the triangles, they sort of stick up in the center to start with, but when they're blocked, they go really nice and flat. And I wanted to block it just to make sure that those edge triangles sit nice and flat. And they do, so I'm really pleased. So there we go. I have also written out the instructions of how to knit the triangles using a magic loop as well because a lot of people said that they don't like using DPNs and I found that originally when I wrote the instructions it's easier to write the instructions so that they're for three DPN needles um, but not everybody likes using DPN needles so I have written some instructions in the pattern as well to use magic loop and those will be published over the weekend or maybe Monday at the latest. Um, so that is my triangulum blanket. I will leave a link to the pattern in the description bar down below if you want to get hold of it. But I've now got my cardigan to show you. So Barbara, would you like to pop over and show us what you've got on? Thank you very much, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing my second sparkle cardigan. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and I have made a few modifications to it. I have cropped this. Um, the initial length of the cardigan is quite long, but I've done this to just past waist length. The first one I did was a little bit shorter than waist length so I could wear it with dresses. This one I wanted to still keep quite short, but a um, little bit longer than the first one I knitted because this is more of a winter version. I have cropped the sleeves. I've just knitted those slightly shorter so that they come up to about three quarter length sleeves because that's the style of sleeve I tend to wear the most. Otherwise, I just end up pushing them up. And the third change that I've made so far is that I've omitted the eyelet pattern that was all over this pattern. I have knitted one with the eyelets all over it before and I just thought this might be nice if I did it without the holes just so that it is more of a sort of wintry, slightly more wintry cardigan even though it's only it's quite a small one. It can be worn underneath um, jackets and things um, if need be. I love the shape of this cardigan. That is the reason why I wanted to knit a set, second one and just omit the eyelets out of it. I like the way that it's constructed. You start off with knitting the back of the garment, then you knit front panels here just under the arm and then join under the arm and knit backwards and forwards um, for the main body and then go back and knit those sleeves in afterwards. So I have finished the second sleeve since I showed you last and what I'm, I just need to go back and do is pick stitches up around the front, the neck and do that ribbon around the neck with some buttonholes as well and add some buttons on. I do love the way it's coming out. So this is my Ocean Drive colorway and it is actually the same base as I showed you the Frankie Shawl which is a merino silk and yak mix, mix of yarn and I just love this base at the moment. So I have knitted a cardigan in this before in the gold colorway which was the Wishes cardigan um, also by Hohi Locatelli and I thought having a second one of these um, sparkle cardigans would be really lovely in it as well and I just wanted a sort of tealy bluey green um, that will go with lots of, of my garments that I already have. Um, so there we are that is my cardigan. I'm not going to try it on this week because it's really warm and it's hot enough putting a shawl on. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a super warm for August um, so hopefully once I finish that I can give you a proper twirl in the lounge when all the ribbons around the neck as well so thank you very much Barbara so that's all the knitting I've got to show you this week but I do have some sewing to show you so I've been working on this project quite a while I have been making the little decorative hexagon motifs for the outside um, over the months I attached those to the side panels quite a while ago and I joined all those panels together 
and I hadn't got round to lining it. So since the last podcast, I've sewn some hexagon motifs onto the inside of the basket. So this English paper piece, and I've actually used hexaforms that you leave in inside where I've wrapped the fabric round and sewn them together so that it gives a 3D effect. I've not only chosen to join hexagons in there but I also had these shapes I think they're called jewels these ones because they fit into the hexagons but then they've got like a diamond shape on the other side and I sewed that to the bottom panel of the lining and I've joined the lining in I did all the actual sewing of the lining together on the machine but then I have hand sewed the lining inside so this is a pattern by Emma Jones from the Vintage Sewing Box. This is just called the Hexagon Box. I sewed the larger size, which I believe is 10 inches, because a previous piece that I've made from Emma's patterns actually fits really nicely inside it. And I shall show you in my blast from the past section that particular piece. So Emma's original pattern didn't have the motif on the inside of the bottom of the box but it had some pockets um, around the outside but I thought because I'm going to put this case inside I don't want to have too many things in the way around the edges here but I wanted to have a little bit of something on the inside so I chose to do the motif on the bottom instead. Now Emma's instructions tells you how to put the whole thing together but of course I have to change it slightly because that's what I'm like. <laughs> um, so inside here is some like foam um, and an interfacing but I've also put a little bit of wadding on the inside of here as well because when I was sewing hexagons onto the bottom panel I decided that if I put some wadding in it when I stitch around the outside of the hexagons then it would be it would make a nicer finish if I stitched through some um, bamboo and cotton wadding as well so I did put that on the inside as well which made which has made it slightly more bulky um, which in turn meant that I actually needed to take another eighth of an inch off the seams for the lining. So I don't advise doing what I did because it makes it a little bit more fiddly. <laughs> if you just follow Emma's instructions and do as she said, then it's much easier to actually line the piece. But I really love how this looks. The only thing is I'm thinking that maybe I do need to make a lid for it um, because that would finish it off really nicely. But I did think about doing one that come out right over the edge here, but because I've sewn these on right in the centre of these square panels, then it's going to look odd if I've got a lid coming over the edge here, if that makes sense. So what I might do is either do a lid that sticks up here, that's like a like about an inch deep, which fits on the top and then the lining will perhaps fit inside here where this lining goes in I could do it so that the lining protrudes out and fits in that nicely or I could just do a flat lid on the top I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet um, but I will do one of those two things I think and I will describe um, how I've done it on the podcast so that you can see what I've done but I am really pleased with this little motif that I'd done on the inside. Um, I love these fabrics. So these fabrics here, as well as the ones on the outside, are a set of fat quarters I'd got from Lynette Anderson um, from the Quilt Show quite a few years ago. And I love these muted greys and pinks in there. I think they go together really, really nicely. And then I've paired that with some linen um, that I'd got in my stash. Um, but I'm really pleased with how that came out and like I said there is a smaller version if you don't want the case to go inside like I'm going to show you in a minute but there is a smaller version if you want to have um, just a little small box with all your bits and bobs in um, and like I said Emma did some little pockets at the sides and you could put all your pieces in the side there and keep them all together um, but I decided to do things a little bit different because I wanted to put this case in and now this is my blast from the past from this week I have shown this a few times but I do I do love um, using this and the way it sort of incorporates um, everything that matches um, with my box that I've made just now 
So this is the Hexagon Sewing Case by Emma from Vintage Sewing Box. And it's a lovely little case that you can pop little bits and bobs here. Um, there's a zipped opening on one side and then there's all pockets on this side. I normally keep my glue stick there but I took it out for some reason. Um, I have also made the free pattern that Emma's got for the needle case as well. So this is like a miniature version um, of it just to put your little needles in with some felt pages inside. In addition to Emma's pattern I've also did some blanket stitch around the edge of the pages there um, but that's a really handy way of keeping your needles and another pattern that Emma has free was a little pin cushion which was very very fiddly with these quarter inch hexagons but I am very pleased I've made it it's a very cute little pattern most of these I've used the the hexaform inserts from Ashmead Designs and I think they just give a nice little bit of 3D um, to your project. So that pops into my pocket and then I've decorated it with some quarter inch little hexagon ferrets. On the back I've done some one inch hexagons and then on the front I've got some half inch hexagons and I think I actually these ones are not done using the hexaforms they're just flat so you can really see the difference between the ones that were flat and then here I've added the hexaforms so there's quite a bit of 3d look to it when you've actually got the hexaform in there so you can see I can pop this inside my new little hexagon box and it fits really nicely there is actually part of the pattern for the hexagon case is to have a little button closure but i didn't do that button clo closure because i always planned to finish this box i've only just got around to doing it <laughs> So there we go, that's my little set of Emma's Vintage Sewing Box patterns with all my English paper pieces stuffed all together. But I am tempted to do a little lid on there as well, but I'll keep you updated as to how I get on with that little project. So, my confession section next. Right, so I saw that there was a sale on the Sew Over It website, which I think actually runs till the end of the month. So you still have a little bit of time um, to get some patterns 30% off. But I'd seen, uh, well, about a month ago that there was 50% off the Esma dress at uh, Sew Over It. And I nearly bought it and I missed the time frame. And then when I saw that there was another 30% off, I've snapped it up ready because it is a jersey dress. And I thought that that would be brilliant um, for lots of and lots of wear because I love stretchy dresses <laughs> and it's got slightly different detail to the stretchy dresses that I've made before it's got like a panel around the waist and pockets because everyone needs pockets um, and I just thought it was a nice sort of simple not too dressy dress that you could wear every day and be really comfortable in secret pajamas I say so I've purchased a copy of that so over it patterns go up to a size 30 now which is I think is absolutely brilliant which now I am well within the size range because previously I think I was just a little bit bigger than the size 20 that was their previous limit but now it's a size 30 so it's absolutely brilliant and I think that they go from a size UK 6 to a size UK 30 now so I'm really pleased about that. So that is my first sort of naughty purchase for this week and because I I'm not going to the Festival of Quilts this weekend. I gave my tickets away um, earlier in the week because we all got COVID and I still don't feel brilliant. So I thought best not to go and also, and I'm sort of on the borderline uh, if I count it as 10 days from the day that, that I started testing positive for COVID. So I thought it's best not to go because I don't want to give it to anyone else. And I was also going to visit my parents. Um, that's where we'd be staying and go into the show with. So I did, really didn't want to give it to mum and dad as well. So that is why that I gave away the tickets. People were saying that actually it's only a sort of seven day window now, but I was just being over cautious because I didn't want to give it to my mum and dad especially. Um, so I purchased some fabrics for myself. So I was having a look on the Guthrie and Garney website because I was looking for the Esma dress to see if there was fabric that I'd like to make something out of. Um, but I didn't see anything that was specifically for the Esma dress and I think I have something in my stash already. So I thought I'll just have a look at the other jersey fabrics as well. <laughs> and 
I saw this mustard and I just thought, ooh. And it is a really beautiful mustard colour with a simple little dotted line across. If you actually look really carefully, it's just that the a white thread is knitted in every few rows which I think is lovely. So it's not printed, it's actually a thread knitted into the jersey fabric. And I just thought that that was really pretty. So this is quite a lightweight jersey fabric. Um, and I was thinking that I'd make a three quarter length sleeve t-shirt for the sort of autumn time out of this one. So I picked up a metre and a half because normally I need about a metre and a half to do a three quarter length sleeve top and I'm normally left with a bit extra and I thought I could always make something for Jensen out of it as well with a metre and a half. Um, so I've picked up a metre and a half of this and it was actually on sale. I think it was ten twenty instead of £12 something so I saved a bit of money. <laughs> so that's the first one and then I saw this turquoise isn't that beautiful so I just love a bit of turquoise and this is a uh, cotton interlock um, organic jersey and this was a couple of pounds off as well so I couldn't resist and I got two meters of this because I thought that, that might make a nice sort of cardigan and I think normally for a cardigan I need about two meters of fabric and this is so so soft if you look really closely at it it's a bit mild as well which is lovely so I'm really f looking forward to um, making a cardigan out of that. And I did actually think that these two colours go together really nicely. Um, so we shall see. Um, I might have a new outfit at some point soon. <laughs> That's if I have enough time to do any sewing. Um, I have actually cut out some stuff for Jensen to do next. Um, so hopefully by next week I can show you something um, for Jensen as well. So the next section is the Ask Me Anything section. So the first question I've got is from Mel Melena and she wanted to know how I did the embroidery for the eyes on my butterfly. Now the original pattern says to do French knots and I did not want to do a French knot because um, I thought he's just going to pull that off. So if you look really closely it's not the neatest job but I've just literally done a satin stitch over a couple of those knit stitches there just round and round and round so that it is really well ingrained into those knit stitches. Um, I made sure that I'd buried my knot into the fabric before I started and then just stitched over myself a few times before I started doing the satin stitches. So I was more concerned about this being as sturdy as possible with it going to be going to Jensen afterwards. Um, and then when I'd done that, I'd knotted the thread behind the fabric and then I wove it in and out through the head um, so that it would be really really sturdy in there. Um, I'm sorry I can't do your proper demonstration at the moment because he's obviously finished um, but the next time I do one I will show you exactly how I do it. It's just a case of doing a nice tight satin stitch back and forwards over a small area just so that that isn't going to be easy to pull out. It's, it's really um, tight into that knit fabric. So I hope that's helpful, Melina. Um, the next question is from Tracy, and she was saying about how Jensen looks like Adam um, in terms of his hair and his eyes. But I don't know, I think that he's a combination of us both in terms of his hair. Um, you can't really tell in when you see him in the videos, but his hair has got a little bit of a curl to it. So his hair is like it's like as if it's a cross between mine and Adam's and it's also the same color as my hair because Adam is naturally very white uh, like a really white blonde but he's now gone gray so his hair color's changed from his sort of natural color of what that he was born with um, and his eye color as well Jensen's eye color is it's the same as mine on the outside but then in the inside um, it's got Adam's eyes so it's a sort of a nice combination of the two of us although I do think his facial features are more like Adam's. Anyway, I digress. Tracy also said that she knows that I knitted the antler cardigan for Jensen in a size 12 months um, and Jensen is growing quite big now and she was worried that he wouldn't fit into it. Now 
I haven't tried it on him at the moment because it is really, really warm. Well, it is for the UK anyway, and it is quite a thick Aran weight jumper. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it did come up a little bit big anyway for that particular garment. Adam's mum knitted that one, so um, she's a slightly looser knitter than me as well. So I'm thinking it should fit. That is hoping that in the next few weeks it cools down the weather because he is getting close to a 12 month fit um so i'm sure that for sort of september october he'll be into that size and he won't be one until november so i'm thinking it'll he'll get somewhere out of it but not quite as much as i intended to start with and i, I think actually because it's such a nice little pattern i probably knit quite a few of those in in bigger sizes and I can always knit one in the same color as my my cardigan and Adam's jumper again so that we all match still so that's all the questions I've got from the ask me anything thread I've got some things on my shop update and then the appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast so in terms of shop update my yarn advent calendars and bag sets that are in the theme of jolly jingles are going to be in the shop until the end of this month so if you want to get one of those make sure you order one before the end of the month because i will be taking them down um i will pop a picture on the screen so you can see the the sort of theme of this year's sort of yarns and bags the advent colors themselves of the minis won't be in the same colors as the art it's just the theme of the advent um, but they will all be sort of mid-tones and paler colors in that um in those yarns September yarn clubs will be available from this Friday the 19th of August at 7 p.m. GMT and they will be available until the 4th of September what I'm going to do as well is I'll have September and October to be available to buy together so that if you want to save on postage you get in you buy in two months at once but those won't be shipped until the October um, yarn clubs will be shipped um, if you buy September on their own they'll be shipped on the 16th of September this week I'm going to have a couple of new things in the shop so the yarn kits to make the Frankie shawl which I showed you at the beginning of the podcast so you've got the dark pink man I feel like a woman black velvet gold and the 100 gram skein of kiss me all those four skeins will be available as a kit either to knit this or anything else that you'd you'd like but the pattern won't be included but i'll put them together as a kit so you can purchase those those will be in the shop and i've also found that i've got some nitty kitty fabric left over so a little while ago i had some bags that i was making in this fabric with some coordinating fabric which was like yarn balls to go on the inside i don't have any of the the lining fabric left but i thought that actually that would go really nicely with the turquoise instead so there'll be an option on my website to have um to purchase bags in all the sizes and all the sort of notions with blue instead of the original lining so it'll be these two fabrics um, together and I'll also make some bag making kits as well um, for these from these two fabrics so I'll list them with a photograph of the two fabrics together so this is a really cool um, print with cat and yarn so I called it my nitty kitty print and I haven't got a lot left I don't think I can get any more of it I'll just be doing it um, in combination with the turquoise lining instead of the other lining that I previously had in stock so that's all my shop update information and it's over to you Jensen Jensen I've got something for you there you go Do you like it? Do you like him? I hope you like him. He's for you. <laughs> Maybe not. Do you like Maybe you'll like him a little bit more when you're a bit older. You just want the camera, don't you, sweetheart? Thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oopsie daisy. There you go. So thank you.
thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in the next episode bye